Hi, I'm Robert De Laurentiis, Zen Pilot, and this is the Citizen of the World. She's being prepared for a polar circumnavigation starting December 15th, 2018. The plane's been highly modified, and we're going to show you some of those modifications. I'm going to talk to you about some of the preparations I've been making over the last 14 months that can help you as a general aviation pilot. There are several things that make this trip even possible. It's the combination of a very long wing, very high-tech propellers, and zero-time Honeywell TPE 331-10T engines. When Gulfstream bought the rights to build the plane from Rockwell, they extended the wing 10 feet. They also added a winglet. When we decided that we were going to do the trip, we went to MT Propeller and asked them to design a custom propeller. We needed the most efficient propeller that was available today. So what they came up with was a five-bladed, nickel-tip, scimitar composite propeller. It's lighter, it's quieter, and it eliminated the vibration that was typical on these planes. The next thing, we went to SeaTech, which is Copper State Turbine Engine Company, and had them rebuild the engines. Now, they added several new components that Honeywell had come out with, and these are 1,000 horsepower engines derated to 750, but we're getting 1,150 out of one and 1,147 out of another. As general aviation pilots, we've been told never to put more weight in the plane than its maximum gross weight. But in order to extend the range of the plane, we needed to add a great deal more fuel. So we went to the original engineer who designed the wing for Gulfstream, and he did a feasibility study. And he told us that we could go 40% over the maximum gross weight, which meant adding another 935 gallons of Jet A fuel. So you might ask, where are you gonna put the fuel? One place is inside the passenger compartment of the plane where we'll have five extra aluminum tanks. And then there'll be a six tank back in the luggage compartment on the back side of the plane. So that'll extend our range out to approximately 24 hours and 5,000 nautical miles. One of the very special things about the Citizen of the World is its avionics panel. We've installed a full Avidyne panel complete with the IFD 550, which displays inputs from the MaxViz 1400 infrared camera. Navigating over the south and north poles is very challenging. To do that, we've installed a directional gyro with a metal ball spinning at 15,000 RPM. So we'll dead reckon. In addition to that, typically GPS systems fail as well as the magnetic compass. Now Avidyne has simulated flights over the south and north poles and not had any problems at all. In addition to that, we'll place a GPS waypoint before the pole and after the pole. That'll help us avoid that issue altogether. In the 14 months that I've been preparing for this polar circumnavigation, I've learned many things that are useful to general aviation pilots as well. One of them, or a series of them, are the physical preparations that you can make. I strongly suggest that every general aviation pilot take a survival class every year. The other thing you have to consider as a general aviation pilot is your physical health. For me, anything that was a distraction in the cockpit needed to be dealt with. So when I was pushing on the rudder pedals, if I had a problem with pain because of ingrown toenails, it made sense to get that taken care of. The other thing is, do you consider yourself a pilot athlete? Pilots are athletes that play in the game of life and death and they can't afford to lose once. So it makes sense to be eating right, sleeping well, and getting as much exercise as you can. Getting your heart rate up is all critical. One of my concerns about flying over the South Pole is survival in the event the plane goes down. Now with modern technology, EPIRBs and personal locator beacons, help will know where you are within about three minutes. The problem is them getting to you. Helicopters don't have the range, fuel is not pre-positioned. So you have to be prepared to survive in Antarctica for up to two weeks. And I have the required survival gear and training to do exactly that. Often when I talk about the polar circumnavigation, talk about a group of people, or I say we, and that's the team that supports me. Any trip this big, this epic, this expensive requires the skill set of many people. We have a social media expert, we have a world peace expert, I have a survival expert, I have a commercial airline pilot with 20,000 hours of flight time. To get a trip like this done, it takes a team.